One of Power BI's most underused features is hiding in plain sight. In this video, I'm going to share 10 reasons why you should be incorporating the filter pane into your Power BI reports. Let's jump in. The filter pane is a crucial part of any Power BI report, and it has a major impact on the overall experience that your users will have. But most developers overlook it. They'll either scatter a bunch of fields on it and call it done, or they'll skip it altogether. Instead, many rely on custom slicer panes that often feel clunky, inconsistent, and not very user-friendly. Now, custom slicer panes can be great when done right. I use them myself in certain situations, and I actually have an entire mini course on YouTube here on how to build them. But most of the time in the real world, I prefer to use the filter pane and to train my audience on how to use it. And here are my top 10 reasons why. Reason number one, the filter pane saves you time. There's no need to reinvent the wheel when Microsoft has already built a powerful filtering system for you. Our time is valuable as developers, so if we don't need to truly create a custom slicer pane, there's really no reason to spend hours doing so. Custom slicer panes take time to design correctly and even more time to maintain long-term. Reason number two, filter panes are inherently scalable. The filter pane is a native Power BI feature, so it automatically adapts as your port grows. It requires almost no maintenance, even as your model expands or your page evolves. And adding a new filter is simple. On the other hand, a custom slicer pane becomes more work to maintain when your pages, fields, and requirements grow over time. And if another developer takes over your report, they would have to have the same advanced skill set as you in order to properly maintain those custom slicer panes. Reason number three, better performance. Filter pane is built in, so it's already optimized by Microsoft for performance and efficiency. The filter pane uses a single native filtering system, reducing query load and improving performance. However, custom slicer panes use multiple visuals and shape layers, which are going to generate extra queries and increase your load and processing time. Reason number four, a filter pane is error proof. When you choose to utilize it, you're eliminating the risk of errors because it always behaves as intended. It uses one consistent filtering system, so nothing breaks, nothing gets out of sync, and nothing needs to be fixed. Building a clean custom slicer pane though, requires a lot of skill. And I see issues all the time in other reports, such as overlapping layers, duplicate slicers, broken bookmarks, and sync issues. They're just tougher to maintain. So if you want the most reliable error-proof filtering experience, go with the filter pane. Reason number five, it's familiar. A core UX principle is designing interfaces that feel familiar, predictable, and are instantly understood. Once users learn how to use the filter pane, you never have to train them again. It never moves, doesn't change, and it always behaves the same across every report and maintains that same consistent look and feel. And that consistency builds trust and reduces confusion with your users. For a custom slicer pane to match that level, you have to reuse the exact same layout and style every time, which you can do, but again, it just requires a lot more effort and maintenance. Reason number six, the filter pane is flexible. You can group related fields to create clear hierarchies. You can rename those fields to match user terminology. You can add emojis or symbols to provide that little extra context. You can control the width, hide or show filters, lock in default filters on any page. So the filter pane just gives you a lot of built-in flexibility with very little effort. A custom slicer pane can also be flexible, but every bit of that flexibility must be carefully designed and crafted and then maintained manually. Reason number seven, built-in functional features. The filter pane comes packed with useful UX features right out of the box. Your users can search text fields, use dropdowns, or switch to advanced searches. They can expand, collapse, drill into, or clear single filters. Now replicating these features with custom slicers requires significantly more design and development work, which all takes more time to do. Reason number eight, 
The filter paint's customizable. You can quickly customize the colors, fonts, and borders on your filter pane to match your theme and brand. This allows you to style the filter pane intentionally to create that cohesive UI. And in part two of this series, I am gonna show you what you can do in order to design a clean, modern, and user-friendly filter pane. And then in part three, we're actually going to design it from scratch. Now, slicer panes do offer more customization because they're custom visuals by nature. However, it takes a lot of adjusting of different settings to get that perfect look and feel. Reason number nine, no real estate needed. The filter pane doesn't take up any valuable space on your report page, so your users can view the report fully while still accessing every filter that they need. So whether it's opened or closed, your layout always remains visible and uncluttered. So this gives you more room for your visuals, KPIs, and insights. Now a custom slicer pane, on the other hand, will always require some sort of dedicated space on your canvas. Maybe an overlay, maybe built into your canvas, but no matter what way you do it, it does limit your design options. And reason number 10, ease of use. The filter pane is extremely user-friendly and intuitive. It follows familiar UI patterns. Filters use simple dropdowns, for example. We have built-in search, we have icons, the interactions are predictable, and they all stay consistent. Now, custom slicer panes can be made user-friendly, but they require a lot more design effort up front and user education. Now, the purpose of this video is to not discourage you against using custom slicer panes. The purpose is to show you when you do have a choice, usually the filter pane is the best way to go, especially in the real world where things are going a mile a minute and we just don't have that time to build these sophisticated custom slicer panes as well as maintain them long term if our report is going to grow over time. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it subscribe and click that notification button. That way you'll be notified when I come out with additional videos related to Power BI UX UI design. Next, go ahead and check out part two of this Power BI filter pane UX UI series. In that video, I'm gonna share my 10 pro UX UI tips that'll help you transform your filter pane to the next level. And once you finish this free mini course, if you're looking to take your Power BI design skills to the next level, feel free to check out my 14-day self-paced premium Power BI UX UI design course. There's a link in the channel description shown here.